Greetings! I am Michelangelo Maglake, your instructor for today, and we will tackle about uh, Introduction to Psychology, Heredity, and Environment. Well, um, when we say heredity and environment, a lot of psychologists uh, observe a vast difference among people in their reactions and behavior to situations and events, their physical attributes, their talents, interest, intelligence, aptitudes, and even personality. Then what makes people get to be so different from one another? Are these differences inherited or developed out of their envir uh, environmental experiences? Well, well, the psychologist then asks, what are the factors for the variations among people? And there are three important factors and these are species, heredity, and environment. And our behaviors are confined to those functions within the range of the human species. Uh, we are limited by the nature of heredity, modified by the environmental influence. Then, um, what is biological heredity? Well, um, biological heredity is the transmission of traits from parents to offspring through the process of reproduction. And there are mechanics of heredity in reproduction which can be explained by the following. First, we have human reproduction occurs when two specialized sex cells the egg cell eh, or ovum from the female and sperm cell from the male unite. These specialized cells contain chromosomes which house the genes. The genes are the carriers of heredita uh, hereditary traits and the union of the egg cell and sperm cell is known as fertilization. And once fertilization takes place, a new organism starts to develop. Thus, life begins. And during this process, the female through the egg cell donates 23 chromosomes. And the male through the sperm cell donates another 23 chromosomes, making them 46 in total. Well, um, during biological heredity, there is this thing we call the gene traits. And the genes which represent the unit determine hereditary traits responsible in transmitting traits such as uh, eye color, hair color, height, skin color, hair texture, shape of nose, and lips. And with the union of an ovum and a sperm, Pairing of two sets of chromosomes from two parents takes place, and these two parents have diverse hereditary backgrounds of their own. From the mixing of chromosome pairs, there arises innumerable gene combination, and these show themselves in the endless chain of variables seen in the faces and bodies of men and women. Sex, therefore, has the principal role of producing human variations. If there is no production by two sexes, every member of the human race would look like every other member. We would all look like the same. And as we study biological heredity, there are also certain laws in heredity. Well, uh... The, there are certain traits that are being passed on to us from our parents and these are the dominant versus the recessive traits. Well, uh, Gregor Mendel experimented for 8 years on many varieties of garden peas or the green peas. And he observed that when he crossbred plants, uh, certain traits were passed on without alteration from generation to generation. Nothing's changed. Uh, certain traits doesn't change. 
And he also observed that some traits appeared more pronounced and more frequent than others. He thus introduced the notion of dominance and recessiveness in traits. Where dominant traits appear more pronounced or more often uh, a lot and frequent, while recessive traits appear less pronounced and frequent. Oh, less, less pronounced and less frequent. And based on Gregor Mendel, uh, these are the dominant traits that seems to appear uh, frequently. We have uh, brown eyes and green eyes, uh, pigmented eyes, and sometimes astigmatism or farsightedness or nearsightedness, black hair or dark hair. Well, because they are American, a uh, Roman nose is very dominant, type A and type B blood. We have uh, drooping eyelids, and because of the nature of the environment in their uh, country, freckles are very uh, dominant traits. Dark skin for us living in the Asian countries and hot or tropical countries. Wavy hair, uh, long eyelashes, tail and the hair, and then uh, extra digits, kinky hair, large ears, broad nose trails and dimpled cheeks well recessive traits for gregor mendel are the blue and gray eyes albino eyes Normal eyes, uh, blonde hair, straight nose, non-drooping eyelids, absence of freckles, uh, light skin and straight hair, um, short eyelashes, uh, five digits and all other types, uh, small ears, narrow nostrils, and sometimes lack of dimples. Meaning if you do not have dimple, then that is... Uh, Recessive trait, you're quite unique. Another set of law of heredity is the blending of traits. Well, uh, it is believed that some traits appear to be inherited as a blend of two qualities. And the good example is the skin color in the human beings. Well, this is caused by imperfect dominance or by the fact that two or more pairs of genes are involved in producing the characteristic traits. The last law of uh, heredity is sex-linked inheritance. Well, there are certain traits that are known to be transmitted in families in association with the sex of the individual. Examples are colorblindness, baldness, and hemophilia, which occur primarily among males of the family. And these traits having sex-linked hereditary basis are more common among men than women. Well, there is a certain notion about uh, building a uh, personality and heredity versus the environment is one of these notions, either na nature or nurture. Well, environment refers to any factor which an individual comes to contact with after the heredity pattern has been received through the germ plasma. And this includes um, training, learning, uh, influence of the home, the school, your neighborhood, the hospital or the church, your religion, your play yard, uh, your, the climate, the geographical location of your country or your uh, uh, home, and all others that stimulate the senses in any way. Well, the effect of or influence of heredity and environment differs from one individual to the other 
and from each trait to another trait. And heredity and environment are interdependent forces. They always come together. And in some cases, the effect of heredity is much stronger or predominant. Well, vice versa, in some cases as well, the effect of environment in personality is more dominant than the uh, heredity. Well, heredity also lays down the necessary foundations while environment changes or modifies these foundations for good or bad. And behavioral attitudes such as intelligence, temperament, and sociability are strongly influenced by environmental factors. Even physical characteristics such as height and weight depend to some extent on one's medical history and the adequacy of diet as well. Well, uh, in summary, many human attributes are the product of a long and involved interplay between the forces of nature and nurture. And as based on uh, heredity by nature, we have ways to determine gender. Well, a hereditary basis for sex differences becomes clear if we examine the chromosomes of normal men and women. It is apparent that 22 of 23 pairs of chromosomes found in human beings are the same in males and females. And gender or sex is determined by the 23rd pair. In a normal male, the 23rd pair consists of an X and Y chromosomes. And in the female, it contains both X chromosomes. Therefore, the presence of a Y chromosome means that one is a genetic male, while the absence of a Y means a genetic female. If the egg or ovum is fertilized by a sperm carrying a Y chromosome, the product is an XY zygote or male. Or if a sperm carrying an X chromosome reaches the ovum first, the result is an XX zygote or female. Well, um, since we're talking about reproduction, uh, let us talk about the chances of having twins or multiple births. Well, um, when we find uh, monozygotic twins, it is said that chances about 1 of 270 zygotes divide in two and develops two separate individuals or sometimes called identical uh, people. They look similar, the identical twins. And sometimes identical twins comes from a single zygote that have exactly the same hereditary pattern. They look alike and sometimes have the same sex. While uh, sometimes monozygotic twins are totally two different individuals regardless they came from one zygote. And um, uh, most twins uh, produced are totally not identical but, but fraternal or dizygotic. And they result when the mother releases two ova at almost the same time. And each is fertilized by different sperms. Well, dizygotic twins come from separate zygotes that have separate hereditary patterns. And they may differ in appearance and may be of the same or different sexes. When the division of the zygote is then not complete, well, this happens, and the product is a pair then of a Siamese twins, who may be joined at the buttocks, chest, neck, or other parts of the body. And this seldom happens. And there are also cases when triplets, quadruplets, and other multiple births are produced, especially now that fertility pills have been introduced. Well, uh, in triplets and quad cases, there are certain female 
or woman that releases uh, multiple numbers of ovum or ova. And uh, sometimes uh, during uh, fertilization, these ova are being um, fertilized and causes multiple births. Now let's talk about the sources of environmental uh, influence. Well, the psychologist is primarily concerned with two environmental influences. The internal environment, where those stimuli acting within the individual, and the external environment, where stimuli is impinging upon the organism. Uh, internal environment is composed of two subtopics, the intracellular system, which consists of physical and chemical forces within the cell that influence the genetic material of the nucleus. And we also have this intercellular system, consists of the fluids that surround the cell and influence their growth and development. However, when we say external environment, well, it has three subtopics. The prenatal environment, which consists of the amniotic fluid that surrounds the fetus and the stimulation provided by its positioning within the mother and the materials provided and taken away by the mother's body. We also have the postnatal environment, which consists of the infinitively complex arrays of stimulation that confront the child after birth. And when he grows up, we have the psychological environment, consists of those aspects of the organism's physical surrounding capable of influencing its structure or its behavior. I think that's everything we have to discuss in Introduction to Psychology, Heredity, and Environment. Thank you for watching and I hope you would subscribe for more lecture video presentation. Thank you everyone!